All good. Oh, yeah. I'm actually in the office that me works. So. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So you've got the, the, have you got one of those backgrounds that uh, you install on your chair? No, I just put it on. Oh. <laughs> I put, I've got, I've got some uh, railings here I can set up. So. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, so, so I was thinking maybe we could um, have a little chat and uh, play around the idea of mm, the limitations of spiritual healing. How far does this go and when would it be wise to take advantage of 21st century medicine? I think this would be kind of a controversial topic for many people. Uh, we've got the Puritans that say no, no to medicine and no to anything modern. Uh, we would prefer to pray our way out of it. And then there's those that say no holistic approaches are complete doo-doo and there's mm. nothing to them. So let's see if we can find some comfortable balance in, in the middle that would keep everybody yeah, happy. Yeah, we got to be careful here because we, we could get struck. <laughs> could get a strike. <laughs> we are, we'll, try, yeah. we'll try to do it in a most honorable and polite way, not to step yeah. on any toes. Exactly. Okay. So where to begin? <laughs> um, well, um, I'll probably start with my own serious um, decision to become a healer. Well, before that, I was uh, deeply um, immersed in uh, spirituality and magic, mm. investigating it for the sake of the glorious wisdom and the knowledge of the occult, the hidden world, the dynamics of the greater expanded universe and reality. But it wasn't really until my own mother got cancer and I was observing her suffering in the most helpless way. I discovered that I could uh, completely numb her pain, but that was pretty much it. And so I watched her during the months and years at the end really degenerate and wither away. It's such a terrible condition. So this became my next uh, mission, really, to investigate how far we can push the boundaries of what is normality. Can we cure cancer with energetic means? And the evidence seems to suggest that such a thing really is possible. But it seemed to be dancing around the boundaries of this. Uh, progress seems to occur, but again, uh, I seem to be stuck at taking away the pain. And the major healing of the physical body seems to be elusive. Mm. Um, so let's, let's try starting with what can holistic and energetic approaches do for, for the general well-being of people. What with cancer? Well, no, generally. So what are, what would be the, um, so what conditions would a person have to have for them to seek out a hol holistic and energetic modality of healing? So what would be the things that these types of approaches are really good for? My mm. personal view is people go to us when ill. Why don't you go to us when you're not ill? Then you might not be ill. <laughs> that's that's what I look at. Uh, most most illnesses, I believe, are derived from uh, a creation. It just, there's something on your journey that needs solving, and we're okay to heal the patient, but it might come back because you. Why did it come there in the first place? Yeah, that right. I'm I'm a bit more. I'll I'll go to a different angle here. My I died at birth. Uh, my mum had the German pill, which was the thalidomide pill. She had it in '65, which was already banned, so it's probably in the cupboard. No, no, <laughs> no Facebook or anything like that. And she had it, and uh, I was a blue baby, so I died at four months. So I'm a very, very. Uh, I wasn't very good with modern medicine from day one, to be honest, because of this. So I, I'm a, a thing, but any. An healer needs to work out how to do the actual healing, not just give the energy. Like, how does like chemotherapy might help some people, but it got derived from mustard gas. 
so you need to research yourself. What I would do as an healer, I would number one uh, tell the patient to change the diet, change the diet, have an alkaline diet, probably uh, uh, because borax is banned in this country, something similar to that borax baths. They used to have that, uh, or you could. I'm not. I can't even say that. Uh, and then look at the cancer. There's two things that make cancer in the body. Well, three. Some people believe it could be from the parasites in the body. So detox with detoxing, uh, moringa like I have, lion's mane for mold. Uh, the cancer itself is supplied by the body's fluids and the body's energy. So you need to close them off. So as an healer, any healer's watching, everything is, is fixable. It's all fixable. But the main reason is the patient needs to know how it got there. Why did it get there initially? Why, why did it get there? There's always a reason why it got there. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've had, I had my, uh, my mum had an operation and uh, she needed a, a stent in a, a, you know, one of them stents because she couldn't eat. Funny enough, she ate two days before the operation, the first time in six months because of my healing. Now, she had the stent and they cut a tumour in half. Now, I was told cancer in the blood. She's got six hours to live. Now, I linked my soul to hers. My energy force was hers. And I got another three weeks, which meant she could say goodbye to everyone, which, which is a good thing. If you can keep someone alive longer than a day, they, they don't get trauma. It, it, it's, it's fine for them. Is that where, where we're going? I went in so many different tangent attacks. Huh? No, 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 no. I, I just love this beautiful free flow. It's like a freestyle dance or a freestyle yeah. yeah. uh, um, performance of music. <laughs> so I'm completely but, open to this. I love, I love what you said about people waiting too long. Hmm. Uh, I suppose you've had these cases where somebody in a very, very poor condition comes and looks at holistic healing as the last hope. I've had somebody even say, I believe in magic, like I'm going to wave my wand and suddenly decades of neglect and abuse of the body is going to be reversed. Um, but um, you're absolutely right. That yeah, this... have, you, have you ever heard it when you've healed them and they died quickly? What people don't realize, we've cleared the passage, we've blessed them. Yes. And I've had that quite a few times, and it's not nice. <laughs> not nice I for the healer. Yeah. Understood. Yes, yes, yes. So this uh, gentleman in question, I was picking up a lot from around the heart center, uh, past life, um, past life trauma, and a lot of trauma in the in the in the current incarnation. So he had a heart attack about a week after. And so the message from the healing session was you need to take better care of yourself uh, and focus more on self-love. And mm. so it was pretty much a little bit too late. There was major damage to the heart by the time that he had made it to the energy healing session. Um, so it, one thing, I suppose, let's let's try to extract useful tips and tricks for our esteemed audience. Ladies right. and gentlemen. Self-love. Yeah. Go to your mirror image and say to yourself, I love you and I forgive you. <laughs> and you can even bring up all your, your, your things you've done in, the, in, in your life that you regret. Get rid of them regrets. At the end of the day, they're lessons. And connect with your mirror image. It, it, it's amazing what that can do. Beautiful. Yeah. I wholeheartedly mm. agree. So it's wonderful how most journeys of any level of profundity, they all begin with self-love. Mm. Number two, dear ladies and gentlemen, listen to the subtle whispers of your body and your soul. Usually if something is going wrong, it gives you signals and signs way before it even turns into a problem. Please don't ignore these. 
Mm. Investigate. Now, whatever approach, maybe an adjustment in your diet and sleeping will fix the problem. Maybe you're under too much stress. And maybe the people around you are bombarding you with too much negativity, especially if you're in the spotlight. You see, now you can apply these to your own life and how it fits. But please do not ignore early warning signs. That would be a mistake. Yeah, the, the other thing is we are all full of parasites, all of us. Yeah. And a lot of them parasites are quite clever consciousnesses inside us. Uh, yeah, and you got to get rid of them. Or, yes. or do it in a way that, because sometimes what I, what I believe, this is my belief system, that people might say, well, people just get cancer, but they had a death just before. Imagine the vibration of the body in the change of the shock of the death. So the body is in shock. Your parasites start thinking they're under attack. Yeah. And all of a sudden you start becoming ill. Yeah. It's it spins spiral. out of control. Yeah. So this is also another wonderful topic. Let's just keep, uh, you know, freestyling through these. Yeah. Can, can, I say, can I say something? Please, we'll go on parasites please. about my mum. Uh, I don't say this often, but we one and a half weeks in, right? She's supposed to be dead six hours. I was keeping. I was staying. I had tarot cards around. I had crystals around. I had the a lot. I told. I, I told all the all the collectors no, <laughs> not yet. And they collected her while I was in the actual room. She's breathed in and stopped. And I thought, swines, they've done it while I'm in there. And I. I was trying to get breath, and then I put my hand to her third eye, and I've got a big white flash. You know, the flash where everything lights up in the room. And when you see a white flash, it's not like this light. It is every part, and there's no darkness there. And I was in the, this tunnel, and I saw her floating towards this light, and there's three gargoyle beings showing her. So I, I, ch I told the gargoyles where to go. <laughs> I chased them up to the path. And I brought her back. And when I brought her back, the big white flash again. And she she woke up, sat up, eyes were going in circles, and her hair started breathing. So I just wanted to say one of my experiences, which was, uh, it was an amazing experience. Even though my mum died a week or two later, I always remember that because that is, that is out of this world experience. Oh, you absolutely. can't. Absolutely. Yeah. This, is, this is, again, um, pretty much identical things have been uh, reported and recorded it's pretty much the foundation of uh, theosophy uh, theosophical societies have based their research to a large extent on near-death experiences identical thing the tunnel mm. of light but and but, beings, but i i had the i had the near death of my mum well, which that's is a because, bit well that's because my friend among your gifts uh, you are a death walker Mm. a very high-ranking shaman so you naturally have access to both sides uh, and this is a very esteemed position mm, taking away the trauma of those who are in transition between physicality and liberation um, mm. so you already know this you probably are able to communicate very freely with people who have passed also i also share this it's a very noble thing because people they get they get traumatized and frightened well, it's, I suppose dying itself is the easiest thing ever. Mm. It's coming back that's a pain in the butt. <laughs> uh, but uh, and, uh, you try and not try and pretend you don't listen to them because once they know you're listening, you might get a cue. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do give messages, but I do it carefully when I'm healing yes, someone. Yes. Yeah. Right, you you don't want to be sitting on the toilet and then you got twenty of these people coming <laughs> in for requests. I mean, come on, dude, give me some privacy. I, I I heard a girl of fourteen did exact. She ended up telling them where to go. She was on the toilet and they were queuing up to give her messages. And you just got to have it on and off button. Well, I've turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, because we've got we've got stuff to do. Also, it can't be. I mean, there's a whole army of people who wanna who wanna give messages, and uh, so yeah, they have to know. Uh, the protocol so to speak so it's good to have boundaries for the living mm. and non-living <laughs> wow I, I didn't expect this to go this way but hey hey sweet <laughs> uh, so uh, shall we go a few steps back with the idea of parasites yeah so um first of all they're part of life 
uh, we know that life is not restricted to the physical. Uh, in fact, it seems that there are octaves of reality within which life can emerge. Many think of these as densities or dimensions. Uh, and so because a certain being is born, raised and exists in the 12th dimension doesn't make it any better or worse than us in the third dimension. Well, mm -hmm. of course, humanity is an exception. We have a continual existence in everything all the way to the source of all sources. So in that sense, we're unique. But mm, now focusing the conversation on parasites, it seems the same way that there are polluted swamps and lakes and if you go swimming you'll pick up leeches if you go into certain conditions mosquitoes will bite you this also applies to spiritual domains in certain environments that are less than pristine we pick up parasites mm. we, we can physical ones everyone's got the spiritual ones we normally have the arc field normally descends us against them but i do know that the physical ones and the spiritual ones have been corrupted, like everything in this world. So some of them have been corrupted like a program to attack us, basically. Yeah, you agree with so, that one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, we, you we, see we, it. It's too, you see it all the time. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's very, very common. Almost, almost 100%. Um, and you see the let's say let's say the ones that connect to the upper energy centers crown third eye jade gate and um, the soul star even it seems that they perpetuate through intention or thought and somehow they found mechanisms of transmitting through uh, digital media so electric cables uh, radio waves satellite communication uh, watching certain types of movies or listening to certain types of music it seems these are implanted intentionally mm. within the substrate of such media so it's almost impossible to remain immune we're all exposed to it like the common cold we all get it, exposed yeah to the, it. the other thing is that the voices in yet can be the parasites that's spot on mm. i love this so this again yeah. coming from two completely separate paths it seems that our experiences match each other perfectly. Mm. The way I see them, quote unquote, are like a the shape of a sperm cell. So there's a bulge and a little tail. The little tail plugs all around into the cranium. And then inside the energy of where the head is, they grow little tendrils that uh, grow around the energy vortex, uh, vortices of the chakras, connect, uh, it seems, to the central nervous system, uh, there are other locations where they seem to plug in um, especially to the glands the glandular system um, a lot of uh, involvement with the spleen uh, heavy of involvement with the kidneys and the glands associated with that mm. and also heavy effects on the reproductive system so again as these are basically harvested uh, by the controllers or let's say the pirate species of the matrix the parasites seem to also take advantage of these unnatural portals and they have their feast too mm. so um, it's difficult to remain clear um you, so you get the you get the odd lazy one and these are tend to feed on on your knees because our knees and back are quite weak so uh shall i tell you one of my stories but yeah, this was please. this is one of my a healer who was in the 70s said, Phil, I can't move my arms. Yeah, I can't move them. And I said, what, who you've been healing? And it was a woman who had uh, a knee pain for 25 years, and she had steroids in the knee the Wednesday before. So I started laughing, and she said, why are you laughing? I said, well, what's happened? There's been a parasite, spiritual parasite, living on that knee for 25 years, and the steroids have destroyed its home, its feeding ground, and it needs a new host. You're the host. <laughs> she said, she said, what should I do? I said, just give me hands, and I passed the parasite into me. But I saw it in my remote viewing, and it was about that big. It had, like, wiggly worm around it with one eye, and I, I was thinking, ah, 
And I, I, I swore, I swore at the time. And she said, why? I said, well, this is bigger than I thought. I thought it'd be a little tiny, <laughs> tiny thing. I said, what I've got to do is do a, a fast for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Program my brain to 106 for five minutes, and then I'll be on the toilet all night. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, yes, so, yes. because temperature, fever kills them. It, it deletes them. That's the best way of getting rid of them. Don't have cowpole or anything like that to get rid of the temperature. Leave the temperature for a bit. But you, you can program your brain. 106. I love that. Yeah. Um, so another thing that seems to work incredibly well is sound. Yeah. I, I use this um, almost every single, well, let's, let's be honest, every single session that I do, I use sound. The same way that you described programming the brain, you can program the uh, sound instrument. And mm. so therefore sound and music can be an incredibly powerful method of healing. Oh. Uh, so giving an example, let's do a little cleanse for our esteemed audience. Okay. Ladies I, and gentlemen, I've, got a, I've, I've heard that cancer doesn't like 200,000 hertz. That's sound. I've heard that. That's exactly what you you were saying. Yeah. Or oh, 300,000, but I don't know where you get 300,000. Well, okay. Let's let's uh, so let's look at what sound is. It is mm-hmm. um, mechanical energy traveling through a medium. This could be water, this could be air, and it could be digitized uh, and then reconstructed uh, digital to analog like what you're going to receive through your speakers regardless of how it travels uh, it is a carrier of intention in this case we are using the sound to contain uh, the intention of healing and purging what will become of these parasites well we will give them two options either to um, step into the path of divine evolution connect to the light of the source of all sources or if they are beyond that and they refuse it to burn to such a degree for whatever that remains to be of service to the highest good of all once again. And this is appropriate because as my esteemed friend and colleague Philip mentioned, a lot of these are modified. They're no longer divine creation. They've been weaponized. So mm. let's set this okay. intention that I see. I, I actually, when, just for everyone, when I'm doing this, it's as well I'm healing someone. I'm pretending to heal someone through here, goes into there. Is that how you do it? You must do that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just going to use the singing bowl. Uh, I've just um, clearly spoken my intention for everybody who hears it. And if it is aligned with your highest good and you choose to receive it, may you receive it without obstruction. So this is the energy now the sound carries for me. You can plant any other intentions with sound. So you must be very cautious about the lesson let's say music that you listen to because the same thing that i'm about to use for healing can be used to harm you or implant certain covert energies uh, or virus uh, um, energy into your system so here i've spoken the intention clearly which is removal of parasites may it serve your highest good and let's give it a blast So, ladies and gentlemen, the power of your consciousness, whether you're affecting the the consciousness of the parasite through thought, through sound, through light, through dance, there's so many ways of doing this. Just know that consciousness is required. Uh, Is it my turn? (laughs) Yeah. How I'm doing it, I'm actually connecting to all the parasites that are watching this. (laughs) So, here's my singing bowl. So, getting the intention, very similar, aren't we? I know, yeah. Adding a bit of dragon's breath, oh. dragon fire. <laughs>
So I felt that one in, in my sacral and root. So obviously I needed some clearing in these areas. Um, mm. So confirmation. And I, 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 I actually had it in the sacral. That's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I can feel it, yeah. Yeah, it seems that um, all of us, well, we're human and we're swimming in the same pool of energy globally. So mm. it wouldn't be surprising if a lot of us um, pick up similar things that are projected onto humanity. And so I hope that, you know, this will be useful for our esteemed audience. Mm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just got two blasts from two masters. So <laughs> happy birthday. Um, okay, so... Um, parasites what else about them uh, what about the physical ones a lot of people may think okay it's maybe bugs we ingest through uncooked food or dirty vegetables um would that be the well of course then there's other ones airborne like the common cold the ones um, that go into our skin we could walk across a grass field and get loads of parasites of yeah. course of course we we've got probably we've got so many we, we've probably got a pound or two pound of parasites in us yeah uh that that sound healing would have probably got rid of some of them as well to be honest yeah, yeah. uh but i i, I do, do that i think moringa is pretty good for parasites uh what is uh, what is moringa could you elaborate on moringa that? is like a herb uh mm -hmm. they can they can't grow it in this country it tends to be america can grow it okay. but it, it clears that much it it it, it actually uh allegedly it balances your blood mm -hmm. it detoxes your blood which is always a good one it's always a good one so that is one. this ingested yes you eat it? yeah okay. yeah i'll show you i have it in tablet form but it's it's some tablets oh. that dissolve understood so, wonderful that's it looks like any other any other any other yeah. pill, really yeah and that, yeah five green and what you've got to make sure it's got no fillers, no binders, no chemicals. Right. We want to be safe, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know what? This reminds me of um, Amazonian rapé or hapé. Mm. Um, they it's, it's basically a mixture of tobacco and another uh, combination of different other herbs. Um, they grind it into a very fine powder and uh, they sniff it. So it hmm. enters the bloodstream uh, in through the sinuses. Is that called api? Yeah. Some, it's called, I'm yeah. sure it's called api. I haven't had that yet. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. if anybody has had the experience of doing an ayahuasca ceremony, um, the shaman would usually incorporate this into the ceremony, maybe at the beginning and uh, middle and end, just hmm. for uh, purification of energy. In my experience, it is unbelievably effective in grounding yourself. Yeah. Uh, whenever you're under a lot of stress, uh, life seems to be bombarding you. Uh, in the correct ceremonial setting, uh, and let's let me elaborate on what that ceremonial setting is. Uh, when you respect the spirit of all the plants, mm. uh, you honor the spirit of the forest our beloved Mother Earth and the shaman who's created the plant medicine and everybody who has made it possible for this to reach you. And then you state again your intention to be purified and healed and uh, benefit from the teaching of the plant spirit. It seems to completely turn around the experience because unfortunately, you know how Western culture is. Everything is turned into McDonald's. So people just sniff this stuff up without any reverence and get zero benefit. But when it's done in the ceremonial setting, you seem to punch through into a different zone where you come out in a completely different energy, dare I say, mm. purified and cleansed. Uh, so that has been used for thousands of years. Very, very effective. I, I've, uh, I've connected with the plant spirits and they're very... The, the good, the very powerful. I, me and Deb, we were getting at, attacked psychically by a cult. So we used, I used the plant spirits on a ceremony to bind their power. So they, their power is binded. Now you might think that's a little dark, but 
once they became good and sent good energy out, it gets dissolved. And I had to have a meeting with the, I had a meeting with the plant spirits because they wanted to ask me. They'd never seen it done before, and they're fine with it as long as I'm all for the good. I'm stopping, yep. stopping attack basically. I'm, I'm defending myself. Something yeah. interested about the plants, um, they are the oldest um, species on Earth. I mean physical species, of course, because they're older elemental races. We're not talking about non-physical life. Plants are the oldest um, life form in the oceans and on the surface, and they never sold out. Mm. And so their wisdom is far superior to that of any mammal. People don't understand this. Uh, they have an unbroken chain to their ancestors and the divine. And it seems that plants facilitate connection to source, mm. but only for those who they deem worthy. And so if somebody uh, uses plant medicine, and has a negative experience, that is their indication that more healing and purification is required. Uh, are we got like a light grid? We, we connect to our all consciousness. I believe they are as well. They've got like a, a plant grid sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose that's part of the reason they have been treated with such cruelty. Mm. Entire forests are eradicated. I mean, here in this beautiful island, the United Kingdom, where we live, there's almost no forests left. Mm. They've all been decimated. I mean, I'm looking for trees to connect to and ground my energy and do some practice. There's so few. It's so hard uh, find, finding. Yeah. I, I asked the Emerald Order to show us Earth 100,000 years ago. And the trees were miles and miles, about 50 miles high. I'd, I saw four four trees, and perching in the tree was a dragon. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but uh, so the trees used to be uh, the oxygen here. Even though I don't get it, because I'm, I was in spirit, I was remote, I was in spirit. It felt like the air felt so much better, even in, in, as a spirit being. It's unbelievable. But yeah, trees used to be probably fifty miles high. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the way these beautiful beings would help you, uh, many come across the symbology of the tree of life. I think the tree of life is every living thing. So we have mm. connections through the branches to everything everywhere. That would be the soul star and the branches. Many give it other names. A galactic star, universal star, divine gateway. I just see these as branches extending outwards. The soul star being the connection between the non-physical and physical. Then we've got our tube of light in different creatures. The location of these vortices may change slightly. For example, dogs and cats have different ones associated with the nose, maybe in the, um, the bulge of the chest and so on. But then again, the root systems uh, would be our earth star and our symbiotic connection to the planet. Mm. So we heal the planet and the planet heals us. And so if that is damaged in any way, getting help from a big brother, like an ancient tree is so amazing. So it's a way to really juice up, pump up the energy of your spiritual work. If you make friends with a powerful tree, and so usually you'd be able to sense if the tree's into it or not. You can't just go there and start doing your thing. The tree might not <laughs> like it. But it, a good thing, if you pick anything really, really bad off a patient, the tree can take it. But obviously you've got to ask, and you? You've got to, yeah, you've got to ask. You can't just uh, give it to him. Here, you take it. That's, that's bad, bad manners. That's, that's, that's a no-no. I, I got some, I'd say it was, could have been cancer of someone. And that was at me when I was getting credited. And I ended up running out of the college <laughs> to look for a tree. <laughs> yeah. This so. now reminds me, it's interesting, as the conversation is progressing, I just rem remembered, uh, oh dear, I, I actually found the answer to this. Now, I met a very, very brilliant gentleman. He lives in Canada and he channels an entity called Joshiah. And so 
you can find his work on joshiah.com. He got cancer three times and beat it three times um, to a state where it's not just in perfect remission. Uh, the doctors can't find any traces of, let's say, elevated enzymes or markers in his blood. Mm. So I was bugging him, right? Hey, what did you do? What did you do? And he said, uh, nothing. I just showed everybody that is possible. Now you need to uh, find out that it is also possible for you. So I connected to Joshia. And it seems that you have to go into uh, the primordial void. And from there, come down the ladder of manifestation once again. And from there it is that you can affect disorders in the genome and bring it back to the highest divine blueprint. So meditating on the primordial void, that seems to be the key. Um, it's uh, an interesting space. I, I've been there and it's like emptiness. And <laughs> I, I thought I thought is it, I thought I actually presumed it was dark because it was so empty, but it's yeah. the opposite, isn't it? It's it's clear. It's like a clan. It, yeah, it I've seems been the sign of successful entry into the primordial void is that you're suddenly happy. Uh, you forgot what your problem was, as if you never had a problem. You forgot all the questions. You're so happy and comfortable that you don't want anything to change, and you don't want to leave either. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to be. So you have to kind of give yourself a little kick in the pants to descend then down into primordial sound and light and the 12th D and so on. But it is in that zone where all possibilities exist, yet none of them consolidated into a single manifestation. So from there you can design, it's the ultimate causal plane where high magic can be done. And there you can redesign the uh, damage to your genome and cellular structure. The uh, DNA strands, yeah. You got mm. it, yeah. Mm. So that's his approach. I know that he's, he's still around at age 84 or something. Happy as happy as anything. Beautiful smile on his face. Never lost his sense of humor. And so, yes, that's one approach that I'm very seriously investigating. I found the path of Tantra, uh, not not having super long orgasms. No, no, no. The, 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 the Vajra Kila Tantra, where you become that primordial void. Mm. But again, that's reflected in the path of Mother Kali. It seems all these entities are feared by evildoers. But that's a very, very I, powerful I, path. I connect to Kali a lot. Yeah, she's great. She's that's that's why we're friends, man. We, we know what's up. <laughs> I, I had a meeting with Callie and Sophie was there. And in the end, the two were having a talk. And I thought, they ignored me. <laughs> they were getting back. They were, they were talking about, because they hadn't met for a long time, like two mother gods talk, having a chat. And it was quite surreal. Yeah. I've got a story about cancer. And this is a good story. Well, it's not a good, it's a bad story because a 14-year-old died. But the 14-year-old had cancer tumour in the brain, a 50 mil one. The carer was an healer. Yes. Now, the, the doctor said they can't do anything. So the, after about a month or two months, the healer was doing the healing. And he got a checkup and it had gone to a marble size. It reduced. Yeah. They, they said, oh, we can operate now and the child died in the operation. What they don't realize, the energy is still the same. Yeah. They don't realize that. It should have just waited till it died. And I just wanted to say that. So if you ever, it's strange how they go <laughs> towards last, but then when it's possible an operation can save them, they, they just dismiss, dismiss it, yeah. And the dad said they, they, he should have just carried on, but you know, that's the hindsight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm sure many of our wonderful audience are healers. Mm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm sure that, you know, it's just common sense that as you clean other people, some of these goddamn parasites jump. 
they see that you're healthier and stronger. So it's absolutely a possibility for this to occur. Uh, so how would healers go about keeping themselves healthy and free from the effects of prison breakers? These little <laughs> parasites who want to jump. I, I, I used to do healing on a, a person whose profession was a healer. That's, a, that's her job. And she used to come down for me to cleanse it. And every now and again, I used to get, this is disgusting, I used to get an odd spot on the skin. Mm -hmm. And I used to pick it out, and it was solid, and you could see the markings of a beetle, mm -hmm. but it had gone white. Now, what happens there is a spiritual parasite, once dies, can turn physical. And I used to I put it in a jam jar or a, a, a cup to, to investigate. I had a microscope. I thought, I'll have a look at that in the morning. It had gone. It dissolved. Right, right. So the old way I used to do, I used to pick them up, but obviously I used to do the temperature after healing. But I think grounding would be a good one. Grounding would probably be a good one. A lot of healers forget to ground after every patient. Yeah, they do. And if you're doing one and then the other, the other, you could be passing this parasite onto loads. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but this is also true for the instruments that we use. Yeah. So if you're using crystals, they have to be cleansed between one patient and the other mm. or one client and the other. <clears throat> so something that's really effective, <clears throat> it would be smudging. So sage, Palo Santo or incense uh, with the correct intention. So please keep in mind, it's all about the intention, right? You're giving it that mission forming an energy that's going to do a mission for you in the form of smoke, um, alchemically transmuting solid into gas, but also representing the idea being spread in the cosmos to cleanse and purge. So at the beginning of all sessions, I'm sure that many do this, they cleanse with smoke. Um, I add the level of cleansing with sound, and then I think connection to source and connection to our beloved Mother Earth. A, a drumming with a, a, a mantra is pretty good as well. Yeah, that's Fantastic. what we do. And then you close it at the end, don't we, with the same thing. Mm. This seems yeah. to be a, a good way of keeping clean, um, staying clean, and making sure that your environment is also pristine. I've seen um, healers that don't observe this uh, ritual of cleanliness and then they've got all these bugs and entities roaming around their home. So they work from home and then stuff starts falling off the, the wall. Mm, things are knocked off from the shelves and I'm saying, uh, excuse me, do you do your healing work at home? And the person says, yeah, how did you know? I say, well, you've got uninvited guests You've invited the client in who has 20, 30 entities and they suddenly think your home is a nice place to live, you know, and so they stay behind and wreak havoc. Uh, well, what, so... what, I, what I do, I program my crystal ball to bring in any parasites, any dark, even demon. That could take a demon easily and that is programmed to do it. Yeah, there's the light and there's the dark. Wonderful. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's my protector. That, that's a transmute of any energies here. Yeah. So could you share, like in general, it doesn't have to be exact. So let's say somebody has a crystal ball from a natural substance. Uh, how would they go about programming it and giving it this mission? So well, what would you recommend? First of all, cleanse it, do a clearing. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are a bit iffy about the moon. I get why it is. But the moon does emit some good energy as well as iffy energy. So I would stick it in my palm and uh, I'd put my healing hand, I call this the healing hand, and I would uh, I'd connect to it, I'd say hello to it. It's, be, like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a being at the end of the day. Yeah? Is that yes. what you do? And uh, I'd go about teaching what parasites are and what energies are. And uh, but I'd, I'd like connect to my brain to be honest. I'd, I'd, I'd do it, and my brain would give all well, not no, my subconscious would give all. Not, you don't ever do your brain, it's subconscious <laughs> <laughs> or your heart chakra, and uh, that's how I would do it. Uh, but it, it, it knows it, it, it already knows it's got it's got a lot more knowledge than what we've got anyway. So. It's so fascinating. You you just just reminded me of master crystals. 
Um, let me see if I've got one lying around. So, um, one moment. So if this is a natural, natural one, uh, seems to come with uh, grooves on one of the surfaces. Uh, actually, many of the faces have these grooves. And as you hold it in your hand and you run your finger on the surface, uh, it's almost like Braille. So it gives you information. Then depending on which face you hold in the light, it's giving you a different picture or a different message, right? Mm. And so I like how the camera is picking this out so you can see different uh, effects from the crystal. It seems that you have to treat them like a three-year-old. That you're gently waking, waking up from their sleep. So you place it in the palm and gently caress it. Maybe give it some life with your breath, with the prana. <sighs> hey, sweetheart. Good morning. <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Uh, gently raising it out of its slumber. Because some of these crystals are incredibly shy. Their mm. energy is so sensitive and delicate. So if you approach them with too much force, they'll just remain dormant. Uh, they can easily outweigh uh, the natural lifespan of a human. That's nothing for them. So if they deem you to be an asshole, they say, no, 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 this, this practitioner is too rough. I'll wait for the next one. <laughs> Many of these guys pass from one master to another, absorbing their wisdom and becoming infinitely more powerful. But again, I love the way that you describe just basically talking to it. Mm. it there's so much power in our conscious communication. And then you can program it. Hey, buddy, I want you to do this and this and this to such a quality. And they do it. And they I, do I, it magnificently. I, I've had this one on my heart chakra overnight after doing healing. And I knew I had picked some up. And when I mm -hmm. wake up, it is burning up. It is red yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the crystal can, it can reach temperatures that would scorch the skin. Mm. So that would be hotter than 65 degrees centigrade. And you'll be surprised how effective these guys are in what they do. It seems they require um, conversation, they require light, and they require emotion. Mm. So that seems to be what feeds them. Yeah. And again, a lot of the energy can be done through breath. Uh, Marcel Vogel uh, basically refined the raw inorganic uh, structure using the pyramids as a guide and so he uses breath mm. so the way these were used in Atlantean times let's see if I can show this it seems that they would associate a breathing techniques with motions of their crystal technology so this is precisely carved a 55 degree and a 65 degree angle so this would go into the palm and then depending on how much of the tip you cover with your finger, it would give a narrower burst like a laser or a wider burst like a fountain. But all of it is associated with breathing. So if you're using your dragon's breath, um, this would be very powerful or breath of fire. Again, with mm. the breath, the intensity of breathing. <sighs> that's, that's why when I was doing the sound healing, I was doing dragon's breath. But I, I don't think there's any mercy on dragon's breath. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of unnecessary stigma with many modalities. I think this is counterproductive. Mm. Uh, you know, we really should look at these uh, with the scientific method. Um, if it is effective, let's use it. Yeah. And if it yeah. is uh, free from any strings or, let's say, fine print, we know that it is effective. I don't see why we shouldn't investigate every single approach, uh, you know, especially I, with tools. Yeah. I, I was teaching at a school about two years ago to children uh, crystals, crystal therapy. But they, they had a spy from the from the media, didn't they? And they manipulated it. A month he stayed, manipulated it all, which was a bit annoying. They didn't say that we use crystals every day in our technology, our phones, Sorry. everywhere. Yeah. Without, without crystals, we wouldn't have technology. Mm. Uh, I did an MSc, a master's in um, radio frequency engineering. 
And mm -hmm. so at the time when I was working on it, the hot thing was liquid crystal structures uh, where through apl application of fields and voltage, you can change the structure of the crystals so they can perform as filters, amplifiers, uh, antennas. Also, liquid crystals can be used in projection of light, LCD screens. And then the more traditional use of quartz seems to be the master crystal. So it's got the piezoelectric um, property. When you put it under pressure, it releases electrons. Mm. So it's um, very, very uh, widespread, the use of crystals and crystalline structures. Uh, this kind of certainty and something is woo-woo, usually absolute certainty is the sign of absolute ignorance. Mm. When somebody leaves their mind open, um, I don't know. Let's see what you have to show. Well, that's a exactly. more healthy approach. Exactly. So, so we talked about these wonderful allies, uh, which are our crystals. And so I'm covered with these guys. Um, if I am um, at any given time, I've got over 200 of them on my body. <laughs> Everybody, every one of these little guys. Oh, by the way, there's more. There's another one under here, and I've got them around my wrist. Every single one is empowered uh, with light, with emotion, and with um, conversation in the form of mantra. Mm -hmm. So everyone has the, um, the program of protection, of healing, and so on. I think people use these for fashion. It would be really good if they empower their crystals with intention. Yeah. Wait, I had a, I had a, what do you call it, an alien CCTV in my house. <laughs> now, I'd smashed the bathroom door, which was to the wash house, and I looked at a certain angle, and I could see him spying on me. And then I went down, and it had gone. I went forward, it had gone. It was at a certain... So I, I created a, a vortex field with crystals uh, to do, to stop it, basically. And my wife had cleaned it up with a with a brush. <laughs> and I said, that, that, I'm trying to, they're spying on me, I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> but funny enough, the neighbor facing when she was eight, she said she saw a ship above the house. They were mm -hmm. planting the, the, they must have gone in my timeline, realized I was going to move there and went before my timeline and planted it. Clever, very clever. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, it, there, there are certain advantages to uh, not being restricted to physicality. And one of them seems to be access to many time points. Mm. So they would come back in time before you're fully awakened and affect some things, probably plant their, um, their espionage devices, their, their cameras and whatever, maybe implant the house with certain sensors or parasites even. But again, um, as long as we're living consciously in the moment, we can deal with all of it, it seems. Mm, definitely. Definitely. Mm. So where to do, take do, the... do, do you like me? me uh, this is off me, uh, oh, me son. Spiritual gangster. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I love that. Well, how, how appropriate. Hello. The, he knows uh, me. He knows me. Yeah. <laughs> So, so um, let's now give credit where credit is due uh, to 21st century medicine. So yeah. it seems. Can, can, can I say? Can I say just one thing? If oh, sure. anyone has a, a, if they ever have a vampire, energy vampire, and you can't get rid of it or anything in you, you can meditate to the underworld of the white side. Get a blessing off the, off the earth, God, and that'll get clear. It it's done it for me. I didn't even know it existed till it did it. So yeah, physic. Go on then. The physical medicine. Woo. <laughs> okay, so let's um, look into uh, the most drastic conditions like accidents. Mm, and so again, uh, modern medicine hasn't just appeared overnight. It's the accumulation of centuries of techniques usually perfected and refined on the battlefield where the most urgent cases uh, seem to be very abundant. So even today this is true. Um, battlefield medicine is a whole league above what we would have in our regular hospitals. 
So probably the best they could do at, let's say, even the level of World War I, when somebody was shot, they'd amputate. Mm. Uh, but that would be a mercy compared to the infection, sepsis, and painful death that would result from the bullets if they didn't do that. But it seems that things have progressed greatly. Uh, so if a certain procedure uh, relieves pain, uh, prolongs life, and also improves the quality of life, then we can look at that as a beneficial thing. We, we can also use the medicine energy to heal. We actually can uh, bring that the, the, the thing that's in the chemical that's doing its job as a spiritual energy and we can actually send that yeah. absolutely so so now merging that with with the scientific method um in every single trial for a new medication uh, they seem to use um, a system that involves double blinds uh, meaning that uh, not only the patient is unaware of what they are taking but the person that's giving the medicine is also unaware. Because if the person believes they're getting the real thing, it seems they heal. And so that's absolutely the, the power of healing built into every single human being. So it's called the placebo effect. Yeah, I was going to say that they can give nothing to them. And if the person thinks it's, it's healing, it'll heal. Yeah. So it uh... actually works. Yeah, it actually works. So if and this is true with, again, the identical uh, chemical formula. So you go for a brand name of a regular painkiller and then there's a, a generic version. Um, chemically, they are identical. But just because you buy one which is in a beautiful box with a flashy name, that seems to work better although it's exactly the same thing. And for that matter, they could just give you sugar pills with that flashy name, and it seems to work just as fine. Mm -hmm. So no matter what the mechanism of these um, medications are, it seems the body is doing the healing itself. The mind, the mind, isn't it? Definitely, the mind pro can program to heal. So it's obviously looking at, do I have the cheap one or the day one? Or the day one will heal, so... Yeah, the mind does it. Mm. So perhaps there could be a way of powerfully using this to our advantage. Mm. Perhaps, um, you know, just taking a regular Smarty or Tic Tac and empowering it with the energy of intention and then just swallowing I, it. I've got a better idea. Oh, please, please. Put, put your hand. Start rubbing this invisible tablet in your hand. Tell the tablet what it need, needs it to do. Ask, ask the universe to bring in the, the ingredients to make it work and then swallow it with some blessed water. Yeah, is that a good one? I love that. Yeah. I love that. But, but what you just described is a very powerful shamanic tool. Mm. And I just, did it, I just did it off the cuff. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. This is yeah. brilliant. So the, the conscious mind has a limited capacity. Uh, we don't have the knowledge of the infinite universe. So we call to the benevolent beings of light, divinity, our honored ancestors, whatever you want to call them, the mighty unicorns, whatnot, yes. <laughs> uh, the sexy leprechauns, whatnot, yes. We call from help from all the beings of divinity so they can empower it with us. And so then we empower it with that energy, which the mind does not know, but we know it's the absolute best, and we ingest that. Mm. Man, I love this. Amazing, amazing solution. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I think uh, everything is possible. It's the, the mind that says it isn't. And once you can get delete that mindset, you, and everything can be... You can heal everything, everything. Yeah, I uh, I broke me uh, arm in two places, and just before the X-ray, I healed it. I, I I didn't fancy having a broken arm for too long. <laughs> so, and that is, you melt the bone then. That's bone melting, and then resetting. Yeah, that's all it is. Was there any particular 
um, routine or protocol that you used. So say you, you, you like using the levels of conscious and subconscious talking to the body. Did you use something similar to that? I, I visualized it mending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put, uh, I put energy around it and I, I sent high frequency into the actual spot where it was broke and physically, well, it melted in my book. It melted. I, I broke my ankle uh, two months. Uh, what is it? I broke my ankle two two months ago. And uh, uh, I think it's either is it Sophia? Sophia healed it with dance. Never seen that wow. before. <laughs> Never wow. seen that. Before. I, I can't heal with dance. So. <laughs> but uh, two years ago, I broke. I broke. Uh, I tore my Achilles, broke my ankle, and I fixed that. And the the doctor. It was an Indian doctor what he mean the following day and he says the only reason I want you in is I can't believe it how it's healed and he, and I told him the spiritual he says well I, I do I am into that sort of thing he said just carry on he says but I just wanted to know how, how it was and basically uh it was just a line where the break was everything else had gone so all the scar tissue I burnt all that up get rid of it wow. don't want scar, scar tissue too long yeah. But that's also really interesting, really interesting, that a lot of our medical professionals who spent decades training under the dogma of the modern age, they're open. Mm. They see the evidence and they don't resist. They're interested, genuinely interested. In fact, I know a great deal of our medical professionals are not happy with the status quo especially how this has become a, a business for profit. Mm. The motivation is no longer the well-being of every individual. It's to extract profit through suffering. Mm. Or oh, like, prolonging. Prolonging yeah. pain to give tablets. I suppose. Yeah. It's not so, curing, it's just keeping them going. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so many of these people, good people, uh, seem to be in conflict about this, mm. and so obviously I, they see. Yeah, they see. I, I I went to uh, watch because I'm a martial arts coach, and the other martial arts asked me to heal his knee. He was a doctor. He's a doctor. There we go. <laughs> and yes, so I, I'd like to shout out to all the medical professionals in any capacity, those who are helping people. Uh, go through their healing journey in any modality, whether it's holistic healing or 21st century medicine. I love you all. You're awesome people. Bless you and bless your journey. Thank you for what you do. Mm. So, I, uh, I, yeah, last week I was sending white light to all the uh, all the dark agendas of the world, all the beings that are running it. So. I don't know if that's, I should be doing that, but I don't care. <laughs> I think some of them will benefit. Yeah. Without a doubt, some of them are open to receiving and evolving. Uh, mm. Let's keep sending them light to find out who the assholes are. <laughs> and then we'll deal with them not with just light, but a sword of fire. Mm. Uh, all all, all they'll talk sausages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 that's right. <laughs> yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, okay, so Philip, it seems we've gone over our hour. Shall we keep our episodes at about an hour? Keep it short. Do a, a few more minutes if you want. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. And uh, so... I, I suggest the sound healing to close it as well, close the space. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. Mm. So again, let's do a double whammy. Yeah, so... together. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You first. <laughs> Thank you.
That's beautiful, wasn't it? I love that, man. That was awesome. Maybe we should record this and put it on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's lovely. And, and yeah, the way that bowls sing, it tells you an entire story. Mm. So, what's what's uh, weird? What this bowl? I've noticed different tunes come out of it, different frequencies. Yeah, absolutely, it's amazing. Absolutely. It's amazing. It's one of the one of the best instruments for divination. Mm. Um, you're connecting to somebody. If you want to run a diagnostic, the bowl will really help you. Mm. Uh, sometimes, as you're moving the um, the handle, this thingy jig around the edges, you'll feel it stick. And that would be indication of blockages. Uh, sometimes you start with a really, um, let's say, earthy vibration. You run into a few obstacles and then it starts smoothing out and it starts going really high pitch. So that's how I see the journey, starting with obstacles, removal of them, overcoming and then ascending. And so it helps me pull in images at the beginning of healings for people. Very mm. beautiful. It seems these Tibetans, they knew what they know. They knew their they, stuff, man. They've got the mind of their own. Then. They've got their own mind. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Uh, so I spent um, I, once a month, I give this, this bad boy a nice polish. I got a little brasso and I go to work. I really, really polish it and, you know, bring it to full shine and take care of it because it's a really beautiful ally. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much of your instruments you can really wash and scrub. So uh, <laughs> this one I, I, I do pretty much pretty often. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's an amazing instrument. I've got a, a couple of crystal ones, but not here. And they're, they're mm -hmm. pretty good. But they only give really one sound, only one sort of. But, the, uh, the brass it dances with you yeah definitely <laughs> i agree definitely mm. okay okay so uh shall we bring this to a close i think we had a yeah. wonderful discussion that went really there and everywhere but it was good i enjoyed it that was, I, the, I think i think this is amazing yeah the, the last one i listened to it and it's first time in my life i, I enjoyed it and i don't like enjoy it i don't like watching myself <laughs> <laughs> I listen to the whole thing also. I think our esteemed audience are also mm, liking the free flow. Yeah. Uh, we're not yeah. pretending to be master of this or that or telling anybody what to do. No, it's just a free flow. We're having fun and hopefully, you know, some of the stuff that we share people can use. So mm. it's beneficial. Yeah. And so definitely. I hope I hope all our work together will benefit everybody. Mm. It it will. It will. I know it will. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's not hope. It's it will. <laughs> okay, it will. Let's let's yeah. speak that into existence. Yeah. Okay. okay, my my esteemed friend and brother, um, we can probably do same time next week. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. It it went Me really too. fast, didn't it? It went too yeah. fast to be honest. It's it's the it's the it's the highlight of the week. I really enjoy this, and now I'm full of energy. I'm not going to be able to sleep, so I'm going to probably go run a few <laughs> times around the block, uh, burn some energy, do some zoomies. Uh, mm. But yeah, um, well, uh, thank you so very much. Thank uh, you. Be well, and uh, oh. yes, uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks thank everyone you else for watching. All, all the yeah. best, ladies and gentlemen. Much love. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.